Hey guys, okay, so I figured that it might finally be time for me to address the allegations that I am a soulless ice queen that hates all good in the world. Fact check, I am not an ice queen, and despite being a female, I do in fact have a soul. The truth is that the Lauren Southern who does all of this kind of craziness If the politicians won't stop the boats, we'll stop the boats. No more! No more! Illegal immigration! No more! No more! Illegal immigration! Comes home at the end of the day to hang out with my hedgehogs, Beans, and Porridge, who I love dearly, eats ice cream a little too much, and cries over rom-coms just like everybody else. And despite popular belief, I do not hate babies and puppies and immigrants. I tend to like most people when I meet them, and it hurts me like it would hurt anyone to watch people suffer, and I certainly don't want to deny anyone the opportunity to build a better life. That would be ridiculous. So then why do I go around with such strong rhetoric and activism against mass immigration? Why would I want to stop these struggling families from getting to Europe? Well, my reason for this is because mass immigration is not the rainbows and unicorns that our politicians portray it as. It is, in fact, a tragedy. It is a moral nightmare and we need to wake up to it. So as I like to do on this channel, it is time to talk about some inconvenient truths. Uncontrolled immigration is an escape valve for nations that are running their affairs in irresponsible ways. A country like a marriage is harder to hold together when divorce is readily available. If Mexico can send its thugs and drug dealers to America, what incentive does she have to properly manage her own affairs? If you have no accountability to your spouse and your family, then what keeps you honest? The availability of easy divorce cuts in the other direction too. If you're good and productive but your partner isn't, why bother? Why stick around? Just go somewhere else. Nothing is stopping you, but the damage that you inflict on your family and your children is often irreparable. We already know the intense damage that happens to children from broken homes. This, sadly, is how it works for nations too. The best of a nation abandon it for greener pastures, leaving it drained of the very people most capable of improving the situation, and a constant stream of the very worst of the nation are thrown off onto the country's neighbors. What's left is a country with a middle descending into barbarism. It is a perilous feedback loop. Many people have heard of this phenomenon called the brain drain. Now, that is just a simple, quick explanation. If you want to watch a slightly more in detail and fun video on this topic, I would definitely suggest checking out Immigration, World Poverty, and Gumballs, which will be linked in the description. Now, this unfortunate impact of immigration is actually not one of the main reasons that I oppose the type of immigration happening now. I just kind of wanted to address this idea that mass immigration is this moral good thing for the world, that it's nothing but helpful, because that is just absolutely not true. My biggest problem with the immigration specifically to Europe right now is that this mass importation of people is happening under false pretenses, and it is hurting the current populace. Huge economical burdens are being forced on these nations under the guise of a refugee crisis. Yet, the vast majority of the refugees coming to Europe do not live up to the name anyways. Most of the so-called Syrian refugees are neither Syrian nor are they refugees. These people come from Gambia, Senegal, Somalia, and other backwards countries. None of these countries are in active conflicts. This means that none of these people are seeking refuge from war. Now, admittedly, it sucks to live in Somalia. I would not want to live in a legitimate rape culture either. So perhaps one may think that even though they're not necessarily taking in refugees, Europe is taking in families from these countries hoping to find better lives. Well, I would like to think that too, but it also is not true. Predominantly, the people coming over are single men of military age. And if you think about it, what kind of men seeking refuge leave behind their women and children? Even the EU, an extremely pro-migrant group, has been forced to make an admission. EU Vice President Franz Timmermans is on record saying that 6 out of 10 migrants are coming to the EU for economic reasons. These are not refugees at all. These people are economic migrants whose European adventures are being enabled by globalist NGOs and puppet governments. 
These migrants are even paying upwards of $3,000 for space on an overcrowded barge. That is not conspiracy stuff. This is something that is widely reported on by outlets both left-wing and right-wing. True victims of war could never afford this cost. It is a racket supported by promises of social welfare in exchange for fronting three grand and assuming the risk of a dangerous journey. So Europeans are being asked to provide welfare, land, and social assistance for fighting age young men who are flooding into their countries to benefit from welfare and not seek refuge. Not only does this weaken European countries, but this weakens the African countries which these men come from as well. These men are not refugees. They're not cheap to bring over. And the coup de grace is that the arrangement generally doesn't work out anyway. These men typically don't understand European culture or European values. They're unemployable, and they end up miserable, disenfranchised, and mired in crime-ridden communities. And everyone is worse off. It is cruel to them, and it is cruel to the European people as well. So what is the right thing to do in this situation? Well, in my opinion, it is almost certainly to stop promoting this mass illegal immigration scam that is filled with shady funding, human traffickers, and death in many cases because people have been told that if they just get into these dangerous boats, they'll make it to the promised land. And the reality is, is that people wouldn't come out to the waters anymore and endanger themselves if the boats patrolling the Mediterranean took them back to Libya instead of going to Europe. We wouldn't have the growing problems of the clash of civilizations within Europe if we weren't so adamant on importing hundreds of thousands of people into cultural enclaves. And we could deal with the problems surrounding mass immigration if we just talked about it honestly and realized that no one, left-wing or right-wing, wants people to suffer. We just have different solutions to problems. And sometimes we have to use our brain and not our emotions to find the best solution for everyone. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I will see you next time.